no sound. All right. Well, everyone is coming on right now. So welcome, everybody. We're going to get started in just a minute. Going to wait for everyone else to come on and welcome. We have a great presentation for you today. Super excited. And I'm going to go ahead and start sharing the PowerPoint. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started and welcome everybody to tonight's event. We're gonna be talking about the new Somnomed Herbst Advanced Elite. We have a great panel this evening to discuss um, and I'll be introducing our panel and we'll be going through the ins and outs of the new Somnomed Herbst Advanced Elite. So thank you so much for joining and let's go ahead and get started. So. I'd like to begin by introducing our panel. We have Dr. Ken Mogel out of Florida Dental Sleep Disorders Clinic. And Dr. Mogel has been treating obstructive sleep apnea for over a decade, uh, I'm sure really longer than that. And he is a diplomat of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine and American Board of Cranial Facial Dental Sleep Medicine and a longtime educator and speaker in the industry. And he is also my sleep dentist now. He, he has recently um, treated me for sleep apnea. It turns out I am an apneic. And uh, so that was a really great experience. And I actually now have my own, very own Herbst Advanced Elite, thanks to Dr. Mogel. So um, great to have you, Dr. Mogel. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Michael Pagano. And Dr. Pagano is also a diplomat uh, of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. He is the owner of Virginia Total Sleep. And Dr. Pagano um, was a, is a veteran of the US Army. And while on active duty, he helped to start the Army's dental sleep medicine program. He has trained over 300 dentists in the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, and Canadian Army, and he also lectures for the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine Mastery Program on the topics of digital dentistry integration, including intraoral scanning and 3D printing. So welcome, Dr. Pagano. Thank you for having me. And we also have with us Chris Bedford who is the Vice President of Research and Development out of Somnomed, coming all the way from Australia today. And it's uh, your Wednesday morning, actually. So welcome, Chris. He's the brains behind the new Herbst Advanced Elite and one of the original members of Somnomed as well. Um, and uh, great to uh, have you, a real treat to, to have you be discussing the Herbs Advance Elite with us today. Thank you. And last, we have Lewis Myers, the Senior Director of Sales out of Somnomed US. So, hi, everybody. That is our panel. And let's go ahead and dive right in because we have a lot to talk about. So, uh, shall we show the video one more time? <clears throat> Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's do it. So this is our introduction to the Herbst Advanced Elite. And here we go. All right, very sleek, very nice video, and a nice teaser for what we'll be discussing right now. So let me go back into our PowerPoint here. And at this point, I'll pass it over to Lewis to get started. 
Yeah, so hi, everybody. Thanks so much for, uh, for dialing in. Big thanks to Nearman Practice Management as well and our panelists. I uh, just wanted to welcome everybody to, uh, to this webinar. Thanks for taking your time away from your families to learn about the new Herbs Advanced Elite. Wanted to start off with this slide that basically just outlines what is special, what is different about uh, this newest addition to our family of devices. The, with the world's only Herps product with a, with a soft inner liner, 18% stronger than our Herps Advance uh, due to uh, pre-cured PMMA. We, we, put, we are so confident in the device itself um, that we put a three-year, no questions asked replacement plan on it. If it breaks, we replace it, simple. Um, and of course, as you all know, um, PDAC, Medicare EO486 approved uh, for your Medicare patients. I think this slide is really, this is, uh, this is perfect for Chris Bedford, the brains behind this incredible device. Chris, why don't you uh, take our audience through uh, the Herbs Advanced Elite point by point and uh, how everything came to be. Sure. Um, well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to talk about something that we worked on for, um, for a few years. It's always good to see it come to um, fruition and to get the feedback that we have. What we tried to do with, with Herbst Advance Elite was take what was already an, uh, an established product within the market in Herbst Advance, and we wanted to improve upon the, the, the key features and benefits that existed in, in some ways, but then also some of the uh, advantages that we'd learned we could introduce with the digital manufacturing uh, platform. So, so to start with, if, if we look at the mechanism uh, on the outside, it looks very similar to the Herbst Advance, but built within the Herbst Advance Elite are what we call some welded wire loops. Um, these are on the upper buckle mechanism, and these were built in to overcome um, the um, pullout or breakages that we had experienced um, and customers had fed back to us. Um, obviously, this is annoyance for um, you know, for, for everybody involved. So we, we took a, a decisive uh, plan and, and, and made sure that whatever we were going to do, we were going to not only overcome breakages, we were going to make to ensure that there was a, a right fit first time. And so to do that, um, uh, we decided to leverage our digital manufacturing platform. And so what that means is with, with the precision of milling, it's about four and a half times more precise or more accurate uh, than the traditional um, handmade powder liquid system that we use for what we call traditional products. Um, the, other, the other issue that we had experienced um, over the more than 10,000, um, or more than that, more than 20,000 uh, Herbst Advance that we've manufactured was on occasion, um, there had been some some rollback or some wind back. So we spent a good amount of time looking at this and came up with um, what we call the anti-rollback mechanism. So um, we, we patented this system and this involves a tactile um, key into the hole, turn 90 degrees and there's a tactile fit um, where the operator can feel that this will no longer have the, the ability to wind back. Um, we kept our uh, proprietary visual indicators, of course, eight millimeters of range. We now move to a laser marked number and logo um, to make that traceable on the upper and lower. The welded wire loops are included also on the, lo uh, on the lower mechanisms. And by default, you will be supplied with machined, what we call ER hooks or hooks for elastics. Um, so when we couple all of those things together, that was the, the, the core of what we um, had set out to do. The advantage moving into the digital platform is we've developed a proprietary um, uh, PMMA formula. This is a highly cross-linked 
PMMA chemistry uh, that achieves a chemical bond at the interface between the hard outer shell and our proprietary B-Flex soft liner. So look, B-Flex has been in the market for many, many years now, uh, I believe 12 years or so. Um, we continue to improve the formula and the mechanism by which they bond to give you long life without any loss in performance. Um, so it's, it's easy to keep clean um, and, and it keeps its resilience. And then um, actually it, it, through some experience with, with, with key users, we then learned that what would, what would add to uh, the Herbst Advanced Elite would be to include cheek protectors. And so um, I must admit, I, I wasn't expecting that, but it was a, something new. And we, we got feedback that if we would be able to, to um, displace the cheek around the lower elements uh, by creating a, a protector or a pad, um, this would help with the comfort. And so at that point, um, we didn't get it right the first go. I have to uh, take my hat off to um, Dr. Mergel on the call here. He was um, not backward in coming forward and letting us know how it needed to be. Um, and that's that's what we really value at, uh, at Sondermed um, because it was, yeah. So I just, yeah, those, those, I know you guys call them cheek protectors. I have the habit of calling them lip bumpers. But, you know, the biggest complaint that most patients have when it comes to wearing any type of herbs is those damn screws. And, uh, you know, you can get comfort caps for them, but they fall off. They're expensive. Those lip bumpers make a big difference. That patients, they're not going to perceive that screw head. They're going to perceive, if anything, they're going to perceive smooth acrylic, and, and, and which is barely noticeable to anybody. I know I wear mine, and I have no idea that it's there at all. None whatsoever. It's it's really well designed. Yeah, thank you, and and again to, to everybody who contributed to um to getting the design to where it is. Look, the last thing I'd like to say, that really about all of this is, all of this encompassed together is what gives us uh, the confidence to be able to offer a a three year no questions asked warranty. What here in Sydney, where I'm sitting right now, we have our R and D and innovation center. And this is a well-equipped research laboratory where we thermocycle our parts. We have mechanical test rigs. We do cyclic testing. We do chemical testing. So we've spent uh, 18 months of testing on this particular product. And, and we haven't had a return of a, a Herbst Advance or a Herbst Advance Elite now for, uh, for well over 12 months. So what I really appreciate about these so far is like, and I'm going to show a little bit here. I've got like three or four generations of your herps sitting out here and y'all kind of keep improving on them each time. And as you're moving more into a digital workflow, I think it's important to point out, this isn't necessarily the start of digital for you. And even when you got into your Avant product, I don't think I wouldn't consider that as the start of digital either. Um, anyone that's been using you for a while, especially digital scans, you know, you get models that look like this back. I mean, you guys have something digital going on on your back end, which I think is attributing to how well these are fitting right from the get go. Yeah, look, um, that's thanks for calling that out. Some of them started on the I, we call it the digital journey. Um, and we sort of, uh, we, we began that in about 2015. And we took a decision that if we were going to build a best in class digital manufacturing platform, we had to understand everything, which meant all the range of arch shapes, lengths, sizes, occlusions, uh, the edentulous, everything about it. So we decided proactively to begin digitizing all of our records. So there's a good chance if you've sent something to us since 2015, uh, those records would still be on file. And we then used some research and um, artificial intelligence helped to bring an understanding for, for example, you know, what, what is the, the range of sizes and occlusions that we can get um, with a single set of Herbst Advanced Elite hardware. 
So, so digital is not completely new to us. We talk about the manufacturing platform because that's got the most obvious output in terms of the product. But, but yes, we have a, um, well, I, I imagine we have the, the world's largest database of snoring and sleep apnea records um, currently. So a few things like right away, you know, what's the difference between this, the elite and kind of the Herbst advance and where you've been taking it. Um, my assistants who, who do a lot of titrations and whatnot, they have noted that even within the housing mechanism, the kind of audible click that you get with this, I don't know if you can hear this. Right. But, but it, it, there's a very satisfying tactile feeling when you move it and you can no longer half turn one of these. And, and right. another thing that patients do, I don't know if we're going to be able to focus in on this. Not really. Can't focus. <laughs> but if you're familiar with these herps at all, uh, they kind of have a guiding groove into them. So now a patient, it's very easy for them, as long as they can kind of get it into that guiding groove, it just kind of slips right in. And it's a tactile push forward. Very simple. Yeah, that was, um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling that out. We, we, um, we actually spent quite a lot of time on this. Um, what it is, I'm, I'm not sure if we've, we've got this uh, later in the presentation, some images, but um, what it's got is what's called an interference fit. So there's um, where the, the screw housing normally would turn um, flat, there is actually now some um, deliberate positive bumps on the top of the screw head and they mate into and out of the, um, the receiving receptacle on the other side, so the cap at the other side. And that's where you're getting that that audible click and also the tactility to know I, I'm either in half of a turn or now I've made the turn. So John, John can you advance to the next slide? I think I think the next slide has what Chris is trying to describe. I, or, or it's maybe the one after that. <laughs> or the one after that. Yeah, he's he's got a slide in here that, that yeah, I believe so. there that's that's this is it here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is these are images taken directly from from the patent, um, and yeah, where you see figure two uh, at the number thirty two or that rod at the at the top there, that is the the cap, if you will, and then the spindle number seventeen um, that has the female recess um, or figure two A is, is is where you see the female recess. So that's what's happening as you wind it, um, that that positive bump. Is, is give you know it's pushing you into that spot so it's not going to unwind and you know when you've made that turn and that's what's also preventing these from falling backwards now too correct Cause, yeah because one of the things that was happening before is the screws you know after a couple of years could start pushing back um, i right. haven't had any of these push back yet that i'm aware of or well, you wouldn't have told us about it because we haven't heard of one okay <laughs> <laughs> And then can we go back a couple of slides? One more, yeah, this one. So, so what, what is the Newton force? Like, what are you measuring here? Great question. Um, well, perhaps if, um, is it possible to play that video to the, to the left there? That might be the way to. So I'm not sure if that's got sound. I'm not getting any sound, but what you're looking at is this is uh, one of the mechanical test rigs that we have in the Sydney Innovation Centre. And what we do is we load up the appliance into um, a known um, heavy loading situation where if you open just wide enough, we call it the crunch test. You know, if you open just wide enough and you try to bounce down on those arms, what we do is we, we do two main types of testing. The first is what we call destructive testing. That's literally where we put it in the machine and we push that until it breaks. And then, then we see where it breaks and then we try adjusting the design again. So it's an iterative process for us to optimize the design. We're, and we're considering things like um, the welded wire loops, for example. The reason that they are in the shape that they are is they are out to a wide angle 
And as we load up, as the patient cyclically loads, if they're a bruxer or a grinder, it's displacing those forces over a wider surface area. And that's why you won't experience breakages. Uh, similarly, um, we, we perform another test, which is run a little bit faster than that. And it, it's, all, it's like, a, um, like a cyclic uh, um, test that we know was causing those windbacks historically. So that's another test we run to test that um, anti-windback feature. When it comes to the Newton force, um, what, you, what, what we're describing in this slide here is with our traditionally handmade products, we take a powder and we take a liquid and we mix the two together by hand in a very typical orthodontic style process for orthodontic retainers. And those traditional products, they, they give uh, under the um, flexural and bonding strength tests, uh, a Newton force of about 150 Newtons. When we move over to our pre-cured, highly cross-linked, it's a very tough PMMA with no residual monomer content. Okay, so we make that and then we leave it on the shelf and we um, ex, uh, excise all of the, the monomer. When we test that material, that's where we were able to get it up with the material and the design together to be, you know, 18% uh, stronger. So that's 18% stronger than your, your standard acrylic. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. And we do a whole bunch of other, I mean, interesting tests to us R&D guys, but we, we do chemical testing where we, we look at what happens if this person uses nicotine? What happens if they, uh, in, in Europe, for example, it's very common to have um, snus or, or chewing um, tobacco. What if they have um, um, gastrointestinal reflux issues? What happens when you put it in not only our cleaning agent, but other cleaning agents? So all of those things we run through to optimize the, the material, the design and how it all comes together. So like, I'm curious, I don't know how much you can, like how much you can reveal behind the curtain, but like the biggest thing to me in my clinic right now is really just the first fit that it, the minimum amount of chair time that it can take to get these delivered. Um, I always tell my patients that, you know, a couple of years ago, it used to take up to 30 minutes to get something delivered, but now it's more or less here, hand it to you and you can put it right in. And, right. and I've right. almost, in my clinic now, I've almost raised my standards because our scans are so great. Um, if something's not fitting right away, something went wrong. I'm starting to look at these like a fixed uh, framework for a partial that it's either right or it's wrong. And the, and the success I've had with that has been phenomenal. You know, from, from a personal point of view, I wear one of them and they're incredibly comfortable. I, I mean, from day one, it, it's, it, it's as good as any appliance. It's more comfortable than an appliance I've ever tried in. Um, and likewise, as, as Mike has, you know, I can only think of, we've done probably about 20 of these to date. And I can only think of one that we had to adjust. And they're just, it's, it's incredibly accurate, with, particularly when you're scanning. Yeah, so uh, what I, I'll lift the curtain a, a little bit for you. Um, there's, I, I, I describe there's three tra tranches of, of what makes that up. You've got what, what we call the in-process quality control. So that is understanding deeply using um, statistical process control for the individual processes, how well the machines are performing, how well the scans are performing, um, how repeatable they are, um, then we've got what comes at the end, and I must admit, this is a little bit of the, the, the secret sauce here. Um, Somnomed has developed a proprietary retention testing technology, and that, that technology involves um, where we take the final product that we've produced, and it's been machined from CAD, and we take the printed model that is normally we wouldn't produce because we're just making the product, but we do, we produce the printed model. And then what we do is we seat the appliance over that printed model and we test in the posterior left, posterior right, and at the, post, and at the anterior. We do what's called a retention test. So we, we actually physically push the, the appliance off of the model 
and we get a reading in Newton's how retentive it is. And, and over the last three years, we've, we've conducted extensive internal research and, and also leveraged what had been published. And what we've learned is there's a, there's, there's a lower threshold and an upper threshold for ideal retention. And, and ideal retention for us is that it fits right first time for you, that your patients find it comfortable right away, but also it's able to overcome a known phenomenon of all materials, which is that um, it will loosen off over the first uh, one to four months. And, and typically in, in the particular materials that we use, uh, that could be anywhere from 20 to, to 40 percent of, of easing off from the baseline retentiveness. So when we dial in the algorithm for how retentive it should be, we, we make sure that we account for that backing off and ensure that it's still retentive enough for, we, we call it five years lifetime, many appliances go beyond that. So there's an algorithm that we've developed to have it fit right first time, that it's ideal for you and your patient. But then as that inevitable easing off of retention happens, it still performs over the lifetime of the appliance. Uh, every record that you send to us, we double check. So we, we print a model, we don't just print the model, we rescan it to make sure it matches your scan. Obviously we check our milling machines uh, on a case by case basis. So when it comes out, every single case, the top, the bottom, gets six different retention tests. We check the fit surfaces, we check the printed models. So when you, you pull all that stuff together, this is, I guess what we would call the secret sauce and we do it for every single digitally manufactured product. Chris, can I interrupt you about something that you're talking about the printed models? And I know I have a question for you that I think a lot of your customers would probably have the similar question. Where you, it's, I'm getting the impression now you do print models for every case, yet you don't send the models with the Herps Advance Elite, and I believe not with the Avant either. Is there a particular reason why you're not doing that? Because there's lots of reasons like we like to have the models. For example, should we have a minor fracture that we can repair ourselves? Um, or even more importantly, if our patients are going to get some restorative dentistry done, we can send those models to the lab, to the restorative dentist, and they can use that to recreate the new crown so that the adjustments to the new to the appliance minimizes the chance of violating the integrity of the appliance. So I'm just kind of curious what 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 Somnus philosophy is, because I'm sure there's a lot of other customers out there who have thought the same thing too. Yeah, absolutely fair question. Um, yes, we do print models. Um, currently, we 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 print models. Uh, the reason that we haven't distributed those models is two, if not threefold. First was um, we did originally provide the printed models when we sort of started five years ago, uh, printing of the models originally. And what we found was um, the details that we build into the models for the manufacturing process, how we hold them down, how we block things out and things like this. When we sent the models back, many customers were confused they, they, they'd get the appliance and they'd have it on the printed model and then they put it back onto their uh, um, uh, original gypsum models and they perceived that there was some sort of, yeah, right, exactly. And they perceived that there was some sort of difference in fit and, and naturally an appliance going on and off of plastic versus going on and off of gypsum, it felt different. And people started saying, well, can you, can you make it to fit the gypsum like you did to the printed? And it was kind of, um, something that became a little bit hard to hard to explain to people, but I, but but I, I certainly. But Chris, I certainly, but Chris, you are sending them out with the traditional Herbs Advance. Uh, we are. I'm Do not you, sure. Maybe that's a regional regional thing. Oh, I'm well, not aware of. Uh, yeah, we we get them with traditional Herbs Advance. Right, okay. They they do send them out. So. I, I, okay. I think it's something that, you know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but again, I know you're going to have other people feel the same way that you should reconsider that because I think it's a useful tool. Sure. Um, and besides, I don't know what your percentage are, but I know certainly you're going more in the direction to encourage everybody to go digital and not use, have to pour chips and models anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, um, I, I certainly don't mind being put on the spot. All questions are welcome because this is where we learn. This is where, uh, you know, we get the feedback from people and we can respond to try to, to, to deliver the, the, you know, what customers want. Um, 
look, the, the, the third part to why we are not sending uh, printed models is um, currently we are we have a very large um, project underway where what we are doing is we're using our database, which is now probably around 400,000 um, archers, and we are using some regression um, analysis to be able to correlate the retention values that we have and we know from a given arch and be able to predict um, the, the retentive from your scan with the idea being that we don't need to print the models. That makes it faster, it makes it more reliable, it makes it more scalable. So that project is, um, is well underway and our, our end state would be um, that we don't have to print the models. And again, for us, you know, every process that we can take out means that we can make things leaner, we can have um, uh, less variation, we you know, can, can normally turn things around faster. So that's, that's sort of where we're at at the moment. But I, I certainly take your point. What I love about the whole digital workflow is that you can have all the choices. Like, I do not want models. Please don't send me them. I'm just going to give them to the patient, and then I don't want the, to take care of them Michael, at all. that's what we do anyways. We give them to the patient. <laughs> we, we don't have the room to store them, but we always give them to the patient. We hold them. They're, they're accountable for it. They're responsible for it. But what, what happens when the patient loses it then? You're no, you're you're no worse off than you would be if you didn't have models. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so so like here's here's my dental lab. You know, uh, I don't have any stone. I'm not capable of. I don't even know if I have impression material anymore. Um, I just got a lathe and a 3D printer. It's like a around a ten thousand dollars setup. Not overly expensive, but I had a case today. Um, one of my patients in an Avant had a new crown on number eight, and it. She said it was just feeling too tight on it. Um, I've gotten to the point now, if I'm going to do any adjustments on a device, I'm just going to print a model. I'll, I'll get some occluded sprayed on there and just do it really pointed. Um, so that's what I've got in my hand here. And these printed models now out of a desktop printer available for dental labs, this takes like 25 minutes to print. Um, I know yeah. it's more equipment costs and whatnot, but this whole digital flow, um, it unlocks some new capabilities. Yeah, it's empowering. I think it's it's um, especially for you know for, for dentists who are at the call face with you don't know who's coming in today, you don't know what's going to turn up tomorrow, and to be able to do things quickly is um, is 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 amazing. And I think that's a cool setup you've got. I like it. Chris, before we move on to the next slide, I want to I want to ask one of the questions that's on the chat board because it just kind of think it falls right into some of the technical things you're you're discussing. Gary Ludka asked, "How do you get the adjustment mechanism in the pre-cured acrylic?" Yeah, yeah. So um, what we do is we machine a cavity. Um, so we take we we take the original block of solid uh, pre-cured acrylic. Um, let, maybe I step you through the, the main steps um, for the production. The very first thing that we do, we take the, um, the solid block of acrylic and we've got the appliance already designed in CAD. To get the soft liner in there, what we need to do is we need to machine a cavity. So we machine out a cavity one millimeter bigger than we need at the exact dimensions of the fitting surface of the teeth. Into that cavity, we've developed the proprietary uh, process for um, injecting our B-flex material. So it gets injected under pressure, fills the cavity. We then take that and we take the, the filled cavity and put that into a pressure vessel and we cure that um, at, at 100 degrees C for, for, for a couple of hours. That then polymerizes the um, heat activated B-flex and it achieves a unique bond it's a totally unique material. I, I'm, we created this material uh, more than 12 years ago. And to my knowledge, it's still today the, the only um, material that is a, a, a chemically bonded. So there's, there's no um, lacquers, there's no adhesives, there's no third agent. It's a resilient elastomer PMMA chemical to a hard PMMA chemical. And that's how, you, how we achieve that bond and very high translucency, which is aesthetically pleasing. And, and if you use your, your SOMTAB cleaning tablets, um, it's, it's you know, pretty easy to keep clean. 
So once we've cured that um, cavity, we're back to essentially the block where we've got a hard, it's, it's, a, it's a hard, stiff elastomer. It's not as hard as PMMA when it's cured, but it's, it's the same as if you run your fingernail on, on, on the cured surface of any of the Avant um, products or Herbst Advanced Elite. We then go and take that um, entire uh, block, we put it back into the milling machine and we machine a second stage, okay? And it's at that second stage that we then put a cavity to be able to receive the metal components. Mm. So we then finish the metal, uh, I'm sorry, we take that out, we load the metal components and this is why we achieve the, the, the high precision. We mill those cavities so there's literally no other way that they can fit in, all designed in CAD. So we so, know in CAD. So my assistants have been telling me that the elites, the like tactile click or feel of the turning mechanism is more satisfying than the normal herps. And we were talking, I was talking through why that is. I think it's because the clearance between this, you know, prefabricated metal mechanism and the device is probably less than when they're handmade, I think. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty, I'd put it down to the fact that we're pretty good. Uh, we think that we're pretty good in the handmade and traditional. Uh, no matter how good we think we are, we're never gonna be as good as what you can achieve by designing in CAD and having, having a milling machine do it. It's just extremely repeatable. Um, now, not all milling machines are the same, so uh, you've got to know what you're doing, but um, yeah. And, and the other difference is when you're using a powder liquid system, typically they have a much bigger shrinkage, uh, shrinkage contraction during the polymerization. So no matter how well you control it, it always changes more than what we can actually control. By using the pre-cured, we mill a cavity, it's exactly the fit. We pop that metal down in there. It can't, can't be wrong unless we've designed it wrong. Um, and then, then we uh, infill with very small amount of um, um, raw, uh, the raw PMMA and finish it off that way. Chris, just out of curiosity, you're using the same visual indicator on the traditional Herbs Advance? Yes, we are. Yeah, so I should, I, I should clarify that. Um, I, I think I made an error earlier. The, the, the traditional Herbst Advance does have the exact same mechanism now with the welded wire loops, the anti wind back mechanism, um, the cap. Um, it's, it's just that the, the way that we assemble it uh, in the traditional way, obviously, is by hand and powder liquid and in, in the digital way, as I've just described. Yeah, I must tell you that while you have this picture up here that one of my main referrers he just he, he just loves that visual indicator. He doesn't he has his own sleep lab and he does a lot of titration PSGs primarily because all he has is Medicare patients, but he loves that visual indicator. He wants me to do no other appliances because he he wants to be able to read the numbers. He wants to know how far he's advancing. It, it's a it, it really is a great advancement compared to any of the other type of harps tubes out there. There's no nothing compares to it really. So we've actually had over the last six months too, uh, secure messaging where we've done telehealth titration, just where patients are able to snap a photo of their indicator and then they can communicate to me where they're at and I can verify that without having to just take their word for it. That's been really valuable. Um, I think the other mate, like a big thing your Herbst has as an advantage is the mechanism moves the whole arm forward. So in other, in other devices, the arm will lengthen. And that is just getting into like a, a real simple lever equation where you'll get more exponential force as you lengthen a lever across a fulcrum where you're more likely to get a breakage. I, I, I think that's one of the major reasons why I'm seeing less breakages with your herbsts because patients are able to generate that force. And we've seen several of, of traditional herbs tubes. They literally, patients who have the ability that they're heavy bruxers to literally bend them in half. I had, I had another uh, uh, different um, manufacturer that broke a steel herbst arm <laughs> with the amount of force they're able to generate on it. <laughs> Was it on the screw? It was I've on the bar it itself. I've seen it on the screw portion break. Yeah. 
Yeah, again, when we when we set out on the design journey, we, we made a deliberate, um, it shouldn't come as any surprise, we buy all the competitors' products. They don't know that, but we, <laughs> we buy all their products and uh, we put them through the same mechanical testing, right? And, you know, we, we're not going to, um, we're not going to make anything that doesn't far surpass the, the performance of any competitor when it comes to mechanical testing, cyclic testing, chemical testing, bond strength testing, um, and, and, and just general performance. So often we buy, we, we buy a, a lot of product uh, from, from competitors and we put it straight into the, give it straight to the engineers here in the lab. And, and sometimes we even blind them. So if it's a relatively new product, um, we blind them to what the product is, might even tell them that it's our product. Uh, and they, you know, they'll, they'll put it through the, uh, the paces. And as you said, Michael, the, the advantage of this particular arm here is um, you've got the, uh, it, it, it telescopes in, in, and it doesn't do anything else. That's its only job is to telescope over each other. The part that takes the loading and moves in the body of the acrylic is supported by welded wire loops and they, and they're deliberately displaced out the front and the back to distribute the load, the inevitable load, uh, um, and and that's why you won't you won't see breakages. So, so we have this conversation in my office all the time. Um, it, it's almost also like a cost analysis of what we should be using, and it's the dollar amount that's kind of difficult to put a definite answer on is how long do these take to deliver? How long or how many appointments do they take to titrate? Kind of how simple is it to use? And then once efficacy is shown, how long can I maintain my patients without things breaking or maintenance type of stuff? So all that goes into my decisions on, you know, major decisions of which devices I'm going to be using. And um, as, as far as a herps type of appliance, the first fit of these has been excellent. Um, I've actually now designed my clinic in the way where I need that. I can't work with devices that don't have a first fit. If I have to go into a room and adjust it for 25 minutes, I have to change my whole block system. Um, the titrations have been even easier too because the communication between, you know, where's the patient at? You know, they're at mark three. There's no question of what that is. So, so that's, been, that's been valuable as far as chair time and doctor time when you start evaluating, you know, cost of appliances. Yeah, and, and, and look, the, the other, thanks for the, for the feedback. The, the other thing to say is, um, look, uh, we're human, we don't always get it right. And so when, when we hear some, when we get feedback that something's not right, um, we see that as an opportunity to test our digital manufacturing platform and the visual traceable history for was it too tight? Was it too loose? Was it too bulky? Um, where was it? And as long as we get what the feedback is and, and, and the order number, uh, we have a policy inside Somnomed that within, within 24 hours, the manufacturing team are aware of it. They've looked into the records. They've shared that back across to the relevant hub. And then eventually that comes back to, to people like myself in R&D where we, we begin to drill into What's the frequency? How often is it? A, is it one of the machines? Is it one of the operators? So, so I, again, this is part of the discipline that goes into the secret source of right first time. So, so I'm excited for this slide. You know, no questions asked warranty because I get pressed a lot about from your company. You know, previously, if, if warranties were tough to get or whatnot, and you guys are putting out here three year no questions asked. So, so what what's covered? Yeah, this is, this is not a warranty. This is a full-on replacement plan, no questions asked. If it breaks for any reason in that three-year period, we're going to replace it. That's how confident we are in its ability to perform awesome for at least three years. So, so what's that process going to look like? If it breaks, we'll replace yeah. it. Take a picture, send it to us, and we'll get a new one going. Awesome. No questions. I, I, I'm asked. excited for that. I'm excited for you guys to stand behind that. I want that to be like more of a standard in the industry across. Um, 
Cause that means a lot, you know, any work that you're doing, if you can stand behind it and just say, yes, this is going to be good. Chris, I have a question for you regarding um, receiving time. What do you anticipate as you guys move further forward and, and getting more expertise with the device? How long is it going to be taking for us to receive them? That obviously, particularly this time of year where we're year end, and we're pushed up against the wall. That's an issue. But going forward, how can what kind of real, realistic period of time can we expect for these appliances to be back in our offices? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so, so certainly the the time that it takes to fabricate a product, typically, uh, assuming that you have uh, available operators and equipment, um, we can we can normally have that in and out of the, the facility manufacturing within uh, 48 hours. Um, right now, we, what we've experienced is a totally unheard of um, confluence of, of issues, predominantly due to COVID-19. And, and that's really uh, that's really what's given us a headache. I know that uh, in the U.S. in particular, the the turnaround time isn't um, what we normally um, have it. Uh, so, without going into all the depths and details, everything is slower. Getting supplies is slower. Freighting is slower. So, um, we our plan is um, that by the, the early start of of next year that we have. Uh, arrested that and, and, and got the turnaround times back down to what you would have been used to in, is, in the state. It is the process of making the elite that more complex so it takes more time than the herp, than the traditional? Because I would think it'd be different that the traditional would be more time consuming, yet we're getting them much quicker. I mean, you're turning those things over and, and I'm seeing them come over in 10 days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so again, there's a, there's a confluence of issues. Um, to give you an example, we, we've ordered milling machines and they're taking um, significantly longer than, than, than what they would normally take because of COVID. We've ordered, um, I mean, we launched, to give you an idea, we launched a barn in, around August or September uh, of last year. And the volume was growing at a rate of something like 25 to 35% compounding month over month. Um, and, and whilst that's wonderful, uh, when you get to you get to a certain point where you're ordering things and they're they're not coming quick enough, and then throw on top of that um, COVID, uh, we we've just been um, slammed is the word. Um, however, we have a, 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 a can report we have a thorough plan of of getting ourselves out of that, and and um, you will be able to enjoy the 14 days I believe it is uh, in the US um, early next year. So I, I remember once upon a time, you know, December, 2019, uh, <laughs> it was like clockwork. I, I would send a case in and just without even thinking about it, schedule the patient in three weeks and everything was always on time. Um, I can't wait to get back to that days across the whole industry for everything. Um, that's what I'm anticipating is going to be standard, if not better, you know, once uh, the world normalizes. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let me tell you, there is no other higher priority in our company right now. No other higher priority. So it is to, to get back exactly to that and to ensure that we've got um, um, redundant capacity, even whilst we're dealing with COVID. So everybody inside our company is fully focused, myself included. Chris, do you, do you foresee at some time that you'll be manufacturing these in, in, the, in North America? Yes. Yes, in absolutely. Future, in uh, the near there's future? A, um, there's a whole... Uh, can you see that? No. Ah, my turn. There's a whole plan here um, for how that's going to happen. So, um, yeah, a, a, absolutely. That's been a plan. Um, I don't think that should surprise anybody that we've been planning to take the digital platform uh, and bring that as close as possible to our customers. So um, plans are, are well underway. Again, totally disrupted by COVID-19. So um, doing anything like that right now is just, it takes four or five times longer than normal, but um, that doesn't dissuade us. This is Somnomed, so we will uh, we'll de we'll deliver that, that platform, absolutely. 
So, so one of the things I like about digital platforms are options and choices. What, what are the choices that we can put onto these things on our lab scripts? Lewis, do you want to hit, hit that one? You've got an interior ramp option. You, the, the, uh, the ER hooks come standard. Um, breathing are, the, hole. are the ER hooks the same as that are on your advance? Yes. Yeah, OK. Yeah, so you're going to have a hook on the, on, on the upper, and it's going to go around the screw on the lower. Mm -hmm. OK, anterior breathing hole is an option as well. Um, uh, the the only yeah I guess that's that that's about it right distal wraps oh you a distal wrap is an option you bet mm -hmm. and on the Avant as well that the the distal wrapping was not initially available on Avant uh, that was made available about six months ago or so for those that don't know uh, but on the Herbs Advanced Elite absolutely Chris are we moving forward with the disclusion elements. <laughs> You you order them and we'll make them we'll make them available for you. Are they going to put those as an option on the SAM account so you can actually order that as opposed to having to write it out in English? So they you know it, it seems like it should get on the SAM account to make it much easier because there de there's definitely a difference between an anterior ramp and a disclusion element. Yeah yeah you bet. Um, this is this is again another whole um, area of, of of investment internally at the company where we've got it dedicated um, IT infrastructure who, who, are, who are listening when, when you ask for these things and to improve that, um, that whole experience, just to make it easier to work with us and where, where you have, I mean, Dr. McGill and I have, again, uh, my thanks to you because we, we went backward and forward about um, ramp or discluding element. And you know, for a company like Somnomed globally with 26 different hubs and, uh, many tens of thousands of customers, people write something down and send it to us and they have in their, their mind what, what they think that is. Uh, and that can be ever so slightly to the person operating next to them. So um, wherever you have a specific, um, whether it's a ramp or an element and what that means for you, um, if you can let us know, especially pictographically, um, we, of course, we will endeavor to do our best to accommodate that. and. We don't just take that once. I mean, to give you some background, we don't just take the order once and then have a go at doing it once. If it's different to our standard operating procedure or a work instruction, we'll actually take that back and have a discussion with the hub, with the lab, with the manufacturing, with the team who's responsible for updating the quality and uh, documentation to make sure that we give our best chance that when they ask for it again, we don't have to go through the whole thing. We know, um, you know, what, what you're ordering. And Lewis, I had a question for you. I think we, we, we haven't talked about this much and I'm sure plenty of other people out there are curious too. Being that this device in my perception was primarily designed, at least the initial Herps Advance was pr primarily designed for Medicare. And one of the things we're all concerned about those of us who do a tremendous amount of Medicare like myself is the cost basis. Uh, how is this, you know, comparing to, um, to what we're going to see from the traditional Herps Advance, and, and are there going to be volume discounts on this yeah. too? Yeah. So uh, a lot of the questions on the question panel concern price. So let me go ahead and and, uh, and answer that. Um, so like like all oral device companies, um, uh, we have pricing tiers, right? That are based on individual case volumes. The Herps Advance Elite will cost approximately fifty to sixty dollars more than what you are paying for uh, for the Herbs Advance. Uh, the Herbs Advance isn't going away, okay? So what you have now from Somnomed is a choice, uh, and you may wish to slot, for example, the Herbs Advance Elite in with those patients with a Medicare supplement or those with uh, a well-reimbursed medical plan that follows PDAC guidelines. But at the end of the day, you have a choice. Um, and if, if uh, depending on where your Herbs Advance price is, we're looking at fifty to sixty dollars more or so for the Herbs Advance Elite. Got that, Doctor Mogel? <laughs> I, th I, I don't want. Not that I want to challenge you, but I, I think we're. I think it, you're off by a few bucks on that, though. From what we are currently doing, I think it's more like um, a seventy dollar difference. 
seventy dollars. I guess it depends on the tier. Depends on the price tier. Okay, you have choices, which is which the Hertz Advance isn't going anywhere. So, it's it's awesome price is is uh, is going to maintain and and be there for you guys. Okay. All right. Well, we have a before we get to the questions, we're getting a lot of really great questions. Um, I do want to show the delivery video that we have. And so I think now is a good time. So uh, I'll go ahead and fire that up for everyone. Uh, Lewis, do you want to introduce this video? This, uh, this was just a great video that Dr. Alan Erickson sent to me just a few days ago. Uh, I loved it so much, we decided to put it into the presentation. This is our patient, Judy, and today we are delivering for her a Somnimed Herbst Advanced Elite Appliance. This appliance is fabricated from a scan, so it's going to be very accurate. So uh, we're just going to have Judy place it in her mouth. Okay. Does that feel pretty comfortable? Can you feel it holding your jaw forward just a little bit? Yes, I Does it feel excessive? No. Okay. So we delivered this appliance with no adjustments whatsoever. So uh, we'll give Judy some further instructions and that's how easy it is. Love that. So I've had that same exact experience <laughs> and I know this is like blurry vision, but it's just patients kind of after patient of uh, just being able to hand them the device and just being able to put it right in, no problem. Um, a big thing to notice with these videos is I'm not in it. And the reason for that is my, my clinic depends, the whole flow depends on being able to do this in a timely manner. If I were have to go and spend 30 minutes getting one of these things to fit, or adjusting a lot, I'd have to change my whole workflow. Um, and I've just had patient after patient where we can just hand it to them and it goes right in. Uh, it's become as predictable as a really well-made metal framework partial. Yeah, so maybe I can, again, the the secret sauce there is, is those things that we've described um, upstream in, in, in the process. And uh, every single device, when it's finished, the physical fitting surface of it, we take that device and we put it, even though it's finished, we put it back into, the, into a scanner and we scan the surface again. And then we compare the surface of the device to the surface of the teeth. And we can measure down to a micron what the deviation pattern is. So for example, if somebody comes back and says to us, I think it's a little too tight in or too loose in a particular area. We go and we compare what was the original scan, what was the, the physical part that we made, what was the difference between the two, um, and then what were our retention force uh, measurements. So, um, so yeah, uh, again, we, we, we keep comprehensive uh, quality control in process steps and final controls. Awesome. Well, we're getting a lot of really great questions. So I want to go ahead and start. Um, and what I'd love to do is just circle back real quick on the three year replacement plan, because we had a couple questions on those. So uh, real quick, one of those questions was, what if, uh, will that include a dog chew as part of the replacement plan? If your dog chews it. That will include a dog chew, um, but uh, oh. it, it's a, it's when when we say no questions asked, we mean no questions asked. Um, so there it is. That, that's maybe, awesome. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we need to limit it to two dog chews per patient. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah. Is that is that actually? Here's a good question. Is it like unlimited breakages, or is it? I I, you're, I don't know if you have these policies set yet. Like, if it breaks in three years, does it? Is it one replacement? Is it the three years of the device? I don't know if you've thought about this yet. All these what ifs. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make a new one if it breaks in the first three years. Period. The end. We know it's not gonna happen but it will every now and again, we get it and it's, and it's fine. We are that confident in the product. Yeah, look, I, 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 said, to, I said to Lewis, uh, I had mentioned, you know, one of the scariest things for an R&D guy to hear is when, when, when the CEO and the sales guys get so excited by the data that they want a three year, no questions asked plan. But, um, but we, we, we're genuinely uh, very confident because of that, the testing that we've done um, and, and, I mean, Herbst Advance has been in the market for, for a number of years now, and we see very little issues with that. We've gone and added a whole other tier of precision and strength, and it's, it's knocked our, uh, all of our previous testing out of the park. So, um, so we're, we're super confident, and I think um, the idea here is Lewis wants to, and the guys want to make sure that it's not something you have to think about. Uh, you shouldn't have to be worrying about whether we're going to stand behind the product. You should be confidently delivering the product and knowing that, look, no questions asked. We'll find out with you if it happens at some point in future, but it hasn't happened in testing and it's knocked all the other testing that we've done way out of the park. Just let me answer a quick question, John, before you before you go there. Dr. M up in Maine asked, is, the, is that same replacement plan going to be offered on the Avant? The answer is no. Uh, this is for the Herps Advanced Elite only at this time. Yep, that was going to be my next question. Great question there. And uh, those are all the <laughs> questions related to the replacement plan, except... There is a comment here. What if my wife throws it at me and it hits a wall and breaks? <laughs> Barry Friedberg, Friedberg says, you probably deserved it, so they'll get you a new one. <laughs> Paying for one is less than a divorce. So, yes, this is true. Some, some <laughs> chat banter going on here. That um, does raise an interesting uh, testing procedure, <laughs> calling husbands and wives in and throwing them at the wall. We'll put that in the next plan. Before we get to all the other questions, I do want to address a real quick Medicare uh, paying question. We do have a question here. How much does Medicare pay for the appliance? And uh, Courtney has in the, the chat answered, um, Medicare, uh, Courtney Snow uh, from Nearman Practice Management, Medicare allows between 1150 and 1947 for the E0486 code depending on the region you are in. So that's the range. And, uh, you know, there's the, the four different regions there. And um, keep in mind from, if you are not a DME supplier yet, um, Nearman Practice Management does offer that as a service to help you get your DME supplier license. So you can start treating Medicare patients and start using the Herbs Advanced Elite and get reimbursed by Medicare for that. It's a really great service to provide for those Medicare patients. Hey, John, for the people on the line, do you know if they are still waiving the fees to sign up for that? I know they were doing that for a while with COVID. Is that still going on? Not Nearman, uh, but Medicare. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so cool. now's the time. And I've heard people getting... Um, their PTAN number in as short as like a couple of weeks. So if you're even considering this, I think now is the time to do it while this is still happening. Absolutely. All right, let's get to our other questions here. Lewis, do you wanna help me chime in with some questions? We're getting a, a lot of them in. I'm gonna start with um, the top here. Circling back to the soft liner, uh, how long does the soft liner last? Does it stain or break down in time and need to be replaced? Yep, a very good question. So um, the short answer is uh, the, the, the soft lining is, um, is an elastomer. So it's a rubbery material. And the property that gives it that elastomeric rubberiness is that there are gaps between the chains of, of the polymer. 
So if you have something in your mouth that is of a color and it's kept against that for a long time, then locally in that area, it can draw in um, a color. So for example, black amalgam fillings, if you have black amalgam fillings and you have a flex-based device, it can draw in color in that, in that area. If you have bleeding gums that are untreated, if you um, have um, like a chewing tobacco and you've got those stains on your teeth, it can draw that in. However, um, so, so those, those things are the things that are possible. However, for the vast majority of people who um, um, clean their teeth regularly, that they don't have any dental hygiene issues and they use a, a cleaning agent. So we strongly recommend the, the SOM tabs. Um, again, this is a custom formulated material that we've developed to work with our particular resins and polymers and elastomers. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's, it works beautifully and it relies on, uh, I think once a week, um, you just leave it in there for 15 minutes. It takes away the smell. It gets rid of any, you know, any topical, um, things that have come out of, out of the mouth. So, so the answer there is, um, it, it really, you will really only change color if you have something local and specific to, to your arch. And uh, here's a follow-up question. I, one issue I have run into with some herp style devices is rust or brown staining that appears in the area of the screw. Is that an issue with this appliance? Yeah, again, good, good question. Um, it, it certainly shouldn't be. Um, so uh, rust or, or any sort of salt buildup on, on any sort of metal um, typically is the result of a lack of fluid exchange over the, over the surface of the, uh, of the metal, uh, common to, to pretty much all products. So um, we, we recommend storing it in water when it's not in use, and that ensures a fluid exchange over the metal components. Did I get you right, Chris? Not, you want us to store them in liquid, in water? I'm a big fan of the SOM tabs to the point where I've moved to my patients with SOM devices. They, they get SOM tabs, a box, just because that's how it's supposed to be clean. Patients ask, can I use this, this, or this? Manufacturer says use SOM tabs. Well, what if I just use this? Just use SOM tabs. <laughs> and it, it has cleared up a lot in my office. And my assistants are thanking me because they, you know, everything's looking nicer. Yeah, Dr. Pagano's practice is one of the practices out there that is buying SOM tabs from us wholesale and then selling them to every patient that, that walks out the door with the device. So uh, that's a fairly new little little program we got going. So uh, that's, that's exactly what he's got there, those unopened boxes. All right. Uh, the questions keep coming, so let's keep asking. Let's see here. Um, I have, have a great question from Dr. Nancy Addy. Since there's a, a slight bit of give to the material, it seems teeth could have the potential of moving versus hard acrylic. Any input on that? Yeah, again, good, good question. Um, look, typically uh, the, the dimension of this material is about 0.8 of a millimeter. And, and the significantly different thing with flexed line devices are they perform, um, they hug the teeth in a much um, more snug and precise manner over a larger degree of the tooth surface area. So for example, with a hard acrylic um, or anytime you have a hard acrylic and it's a single material, it's extremely difficult to get both a right first time and overcome the inevitable uh, loss of fitting um, over the sort of first of one to four months. We've studied this uh, exhaustively and it's, it's incredibly difficult to get that. So typically what people will do if they're making it out of a single material is they'll try to minimize the amount of acrylic that's covering the teeth. Um, now they might tell you that they're doing that for comfort, that they're, they're also doing it because it's really hard 
for every single patient to get a snug fit across uh, the entire arch and for it not to become loose over time. So, um, so because we, we cover um, more circumferentially the, the teeth and we cover more of the tooth surface, we try to avoid going down onto the gums if at all possible. We may do that if there's inadequate undercuts on, on certain areas of the occlusion. Um, but um, our experience has been that the, the flex-based devices of which we've been selling since 2006, so it's 14 years now, uh, they don't uh, move teeth or allow movement of teeth any more or less than our traditional um, or historically traditional all acrylic devices and those that are supplied with ball fasts. Um, so, what, largely what, what we put down to now is the, I mean, the precision of the digital, our digital manufacturing platform is, it's about four and a half times more precise. Meaning that when we fit something over the top of a tooth, it's four and a half times more accurate than our traditional handmade products. I would like to chime in on that one. Um, that is like why I have all of this equipment behind me with 3D printing. One of the really cool things that 3D printing allows you to do is fabricate, design and fabricate your own clear liners. So if you need to do some minor orthodontics, it's very simple to do now. You, you can get onto some digital softwares and plan out some cases very easily. Uh, you can print out some models of where the teeth were originally and make an Essex retainer for somebody. Uh, it really unlocks a lot of possibilities of what you can do as a dentist in addition to dental sleep medicine. Um, so I don't even consider really tooth movements at all as a negativity because if there's a problem that the patient has, I can just move teeth again more directly. So awesome. Uh Let's move on to some more questions. This is from Dr. David Schwartz. Do you find the need to add unique hook designs to any of the elite to control mouth opening? It just uh, so I understand that correctly, uh, is the question, do we have various different type of hook designs for this particular product specifically to prevent mouth opening? Uh, yes, I believe so. Do you find okay. the, the need to add unique hook designs to any of the elites? Yeah, um, so, so w we supply the, the device standard with, um, with uh, hooks for elastics and they're set up in a relationship where from the upper uh, device an elastic can be taken down and over the, um, the, the metal lower fixing element. Um, I wouldn't say that we've found, to my knowledge, um, that we've needed anything unique or different because of the Herbst Advance Elite. Um, I could foresee if somebody had a particularly large um, amount of protrusive range and, and that those lower elements were like further away, you might need an elastic that has less tension. Um, you know, it's not so taut to be, because it, it, it's got to reach so far forward but not specifically to do with the placement uh, of, of the, the, the hooks for the elastics. They're, they're set up in a similar relationship as we do for others. I hope I've understood and answered that. Yes, uh, he, Dr. Schwartz, uh, he also said, I've used tripod hook arrangements. Can that be done? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Right, now I'm with you. Um, so can it be done? Yes. Uh, I don't see why not. We have done that for, um, for the Avant. Um, I am not aware of the request yet on, on the Herbst Advance um, Elite. So I would be trying that with you, Dr. Schwartz, if that's something that you found that you, that you wanted to do. I, I'm open to that, certainly. Perfect. All right. Um, another question here. How do you get the adjustment mechanism in the pre-cured acrylic? Yeah, oh, we, he, I, I actually asked that uh, a little while ago. Oh, you did? Chris, you, okay. Yeah, we took care of that already. Okay, I missed that one. All right. 
Um, do you recommend storing other somnomed herbs in water as well? I guess the herbs did pants. Yeah, so, um, so any, any appliance that contains a metal is going to be, um, uh, is going to be prone to whatever the oxidation is of that metal. And the way in dentistry that we've, we've dealt with that um, is to ensure, ensure a, a fluid exchange at the surface. Um, and what's actually happening, the phenomenon is called corrosion in the gap. So you have a very small, anywhere, anytime you've got a bit of metal going into the plastic, um, you've got a very small gap around that bit of metal. And, to, um, and if you don't get a fluid exchange there, you get a concentration and you get um, corrosion, the same as what you see with orthodontic appliances and, and other types of um, metal inside of plastic. So, so yes, the answer is um, to ensure that you have an adequate fluid exchange. Now, for some people I mean, that's storing it all night, every night, overnight um, in, in water. For other people, it might not be as, as regular. I think that's the whole battle of dentistry, restorative dentistry, isn't it? <laughs> These margin lines, you can only work within the limitations of what you got when you have two materials meeting. And the good thing with this, I mean, you, you do a device for patient once, they don't go away forever. They're back. You know, you can have the conversation again a couple of years down the road. All right, another question. Is there a limitation on how frequently you can use a denture cleaner as there is with the Avant? Um, okay, so we need to qualify the denture cleaner. So it depends on what denture cleaner and what active uh, ingredients are in the denture cleaner. Um, we typically test the two or three main big ones that, that, that we know of regionally for Europe, um, uh, APAC and, and North America. But we know that with some tabs, uh, you're able to use um, some tabs as they're prescribed on the box. You can you can use it more often, and it will it won't damage um, the B Flex liner. And that's true for both the the Herbst Advance Elite and the Avant. So um, I, I can't speak for for all denture cleaners and and what's in them. I know for a fact you can get at least here in Australia and, and, and some other places you can get, for example, Polydent, and there's Polydent super aggressive and then less aggressive. So, um, but what I can say is, yeah, Somtabs is is definitely the way to go. It's it's we've made that product to work with these materials. You will get the best result using Somtabs. That's what I've been telling my patients too, because I get that question all the time. What can I use to clean this? How can I clean this? Use Somtabs. Yeah, well, well, can I use this? The manufacturer recommends this. If you want, like, that's all I can do to stand behind it is use what the manufacturer recommends. And I, I assume you guys have formulated this specially for this with your materials. Yeah. If you want the best results, use that. If you're going to use something else, there's I, I can't guarantee what's going to happen, but I know this will work. And it's been well received by patients. I haven't gotten any fighting on that. This is a good one. <laughs> uh, this is from Neil Seltzer. As gracious as a three-year warranty, no questions asked is, it would be awesome to offer five years for Medicare patients. For the most part, Medicare will only pay every five years. Lewis, you know, you just, you, you, you give and you give, and this is what you get. And <laughs> so I'd love I, I to actually, comment on that. Yeah, That's actually, I have something as well, but go ahead. That's not always true. I mean, if you look and read the Medicare policy, there, there's things that they'll replace. If there's a specific incident that breaks an appliance beyond repair, they'll, they'll pay for a new one. Um, sometimes true. it's a hassle that you have to submit it, get it denied, and then go through an appeal. Um, but you can do that process and it's there and it's available if you want to do it. It's in the policy. You can go look up in the LCD. Um, that's local coverage something. Um, Determination. Yes, thank you. If you're yeah. not familiar with that and it's written in there. Exactly. And that's why I wanted to bring this up because um, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. And Courtney, would you like to expand on that further? Yeah, thanks, John. Absolutely. So uh, just as Dr. Pagano said, there are those uh, situations where Medicare will replace prior to that five year, but 
additionally, um, in that same LCD uh, or the, the coding article to it, Medicare does specify they will pay for non-warranty repairs as well. So, uh, you know, that can be billed under code K0739 and um, that can be another avenue. And, and I think there were some questions too I saw with, you know, how do you adjust these as dental work changes and whatnot? Um, and this is going to totally depend on the makeup of your practice. But if you're accepting commercial insurances, some of the commercial insurances with medical necessity have a, a limitation of one per day. Now, obviously, you can't make your apply, uh, patients a new device every single day. But if there's medical necessity for one, the insurance companies cover it. So I'm sure Nearman can help people understand the ins and outs of insurance coverage. Once you fully understand medical necessity and how that works and how that's worded, a lot of these problems that we create within dentistry kind of go away. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we do have a follow-up question um, from Dr. Caspo. Courtney, what is the code for repair again? And maybe we can write it in the chat as well for everybody, but if you could repeat that. Absolutely. It's K as in kilo, 0739. And that is billed in 15 minute increments for the uh, uh, labor time spent to repair. Awesome. All right. Um, this appliance sounds great, but if the arm did break or fall off outside of sending it back to you, are the arms replaceable? Uh, yes. So the, the arms are coupled to, to the body um, by some um, Allen, I, I believe they're Allen, uh, Allen screw heads. Um, so if that for some reason came loose or got lost, it's, yeah, it, it, it would be possible to replace an arm, sure. Perfect. All right, we are nearing the end of our questions. There's so many great ones. Um, are you able to add acrylic resin? I don't know if maybe we did answer this one, but no. are you able to add acrylic resin onto the biting surface mm -hmm. if we were to need to add posterior stops? Yeah, good point. Yes, good question. Uh, it's a it's a PMMA. It's a highly crosslinked PMMA. Um, but so that would so the answer is yes. Um, to do it effectively what you would need to do is just make sure that you adi adequately roughen the surface uh, where you intend to add the, um, the material. So, so yes, that, that I can imagine that's possible. Does that void the three-year replacement plan? <laughs> Good question. I haven't thought that one all the way through. Um, I, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I have no Only if the dog adds it. <laughs> the dogs are in. We put the dogs in. <laughs> okay. I feel like Chris, you may have answered this question when we were talking about it before, but if not, I'm just going to ask it again. You can tell me if we have. How do you adjust soft liner if needed? Yep. Okay. Good question. Um, so first and foremost, I, I, I really, really hope that you never have to. Otherwise, uh, something on your end or ours is, is not working exactly as we want it. But, but yeah, as Dr. Pagano has just shown there, there's, um, there's, depending on how specific the area is that you need to adjust, um, those are what look like 3M Scotch-Brite type wheels. Um, and, and you can purchase them from a number of vendors. Um, if you're looking to adjust um, a smaller area, I would use a tungsten carbide crosscut burr. So one that's got quite a fine uh, number of crosses to it and, and go into, you know, into the area. Look, that, that material is a, um, it's a very resilient elastomer. So it's, it's not precious. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of, soft liners out there that you really have to be very careful about doing anything at all to them because they're thermoformed, they lose the intended properties during the heat process, they've got adhesives in them, so you've got a number of different materials all moving that are not really designed to go with one another. So in our, in our process, 
uh, we take a PMMA hard and a PMMA soft. We use the chemical bonding at the interface to give a, uh, a homogeneous um, and thorough bond. So what I do now, I print, if I have to adjust something, cause it's such a rare event, it's usually if somebody gets some dental work, I print models. I know my prosthodontist from school will be proud. I print models, I get out some occlude spray and I see where the you know holdup is. If it's major, I'll use one of these zirconia lab burrs and then I'll finish it with these 3M Scotch-Brite. But it's a rare event, I don't do that often. Awesome. All right. Two more questions. And I believe that's it. Will it withstand bruxing? Yes. Yeah, the, an the answer is, there is yes. Um, so, I mean, that's one of the tests that we, we run. We, we dial up the mechanical um, test rigs and, and we, we run them to failure. So um, there's a, now I'm not going to say that every single bruxist out there is, um, is not capable of breaking one. I'm sure there is somebody out there, but at least under our testing and, and within the known group of uh, patients historically where we've had things break, um, it will be able to survive, yes. Perfect. All right. And does adjusting the liner void the warranty? No, I, I, I can't. Look, um, the, the whole the whole intention here is if if you're having to adjust, adjust an, um, the surface again, I come back to the original point. Um, we've developed the sophistication in the quality control to the point where we believe that we understand what the right amount of retention and fit should be right first time every time. Honestly, if somebody has to sit there and 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 spend a lot of, of time adjusting, uh, we, we've really got to ask ourselves, something on your end or our end didn't go right. Please tell us about it. Give us the, tell us the issue, the, give us the order number, and we'll look into it right away. I cannot recommend intraoral scanning enough for two reasons. One, the actual fit on the teeth is an instant improvement. You know immediately if your impression's good or bad or if you have an area you need to rescan. And then also with the bite registration, if you take a, a traditional bite registration and you use bite registration material on a fork, those forks bend, there's opportunity for a mounting error. Um, that whole process gets cleaned up with a digital scanner. Uh, get a high quality one, you know, they're not that expensive anymore. 15 to $30,000 gets you a scanner that is excellent and it will save so many problems. You know, I didn't, I didn't go into explaining something important when we were talking about pricing. <clears throat> when we launched the Avant for the first time ever, we, we, we came out with, with different pricing, iOS scans versus traditional impressions. And cases that came to us via iOS were, were awarded a $40 promotional discount. Um, that is continuing with Herps Advance Elite. So across our entire digital platform, Avant Herps Advance Elite, it's $40 less if you're sending us scans because of everything that Chris and, and, and the docs have said. We're, the, the quality of, we're only able to make as good of a device based on what we get, right? And we know that the quality of a scan versus a, a traditional impression is typically very, very good. In the um, math with that, so like a PVS impression, if you do a wash on it, and with the bite registration and a bite fork, that's like a $20 impression. So if you look at the savings of like $60 per device by using intraoral scanning, let's just say you do five devices, you're getting close to what the financing of a scanner is. <laughs> to where, you know, the, the, the math adds up really quickly with this. Guys, we promised a free Herps of Anti Elite demo for everybody to sat through the entirety of this, uh, of this awesome webinar. Um, we are, as you guys are, it's our crazy end of the year busy time too. So be patient with us as we churn these out for you guys. It'll be a little while. Uh, the last thing we want to do is take up time on the milling machines that should be for a patient that, that we're on an end of the year deadline. So be patient, but uh, 
Um, yeah, that's our that's our uh, way of saying thank you for you guys to come on board uh, tonight, learn about this, and we'll get you guys, each of you, a, a Herbs of Ancy Lead demo in the mail as soon as we can. It'll be a little while though, so thanks for your patience. Awesome. Well, this was fantastic, and thank you so much for joining. Any final words from our panel before we wrap up for this evening? Thank you, and um, I'm also gonna say thank you to my wife right now. Uh, <laughs> it, we're on the East Coast here, it's late. We're having a baby in a couple of days, so. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, thanks everyone for sticking around here. Uh, give some thoughts and prayers to my wife here in a couple of days. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm very easy to find on Facebook, Michael Pagano. Uh, bald guy, easy to find. <laughs> awesome. I guess well, I should congratulations. Thank my wife too, because she filled up my wine glass while we're in the middle of this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you, you all everybody. so much. Thank you, Lewis. And thank you all. Everyone have a great night. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Indeed. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye.